Hey guys. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. Hi. So I've stuck the, the link to the meeting minutes in the chat. If folks could go add themselves as attendees, that would be awesome. Um, and I also wanted to remind folks that <clears throat> these meetings are automatically recorded from the time they begin and automatically pushed up to YouTube. So um, yeah, you are being recorded and it will be published, um, but we still have quite a good time here, so. Awesome. Um, I did want to actually um, draw some attention to some of the things that we do have in the agenda. So um, in, in particular, Alex has kindly joined us to share some, update us on some of the progress on the logo. And we'll get to that a little bit further out on the agenda. So. Thank you, Alex, for, for making the time to come and talk to us. We, we really appreciate it. We're super excited about your work. Oh, great. Yes, I look forward to speaking to you all. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Frederick. Um, is there someone who could share the meeting minutes with the meeting? I can do it. Just give me a second. No. Yeah. Hmm. Meeting minutes, meeting minutes. Uh, do you see my meeting minutes or? Uh, no? I'm seeing the top of a browser, you know, half the screen is a browser. <laughs> that's it's strange. Like, like, it's like a browser bar, but that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me see. Ah, should be this one. Okay, I guess this is better. We'll uh, wait a few moments for last few stragglers to come in. Then we'll get a. Then we'll get started. So is, I mean, are my meeting minutes seen here? I mean, am I sharing something or? Yep. Yeah. yeah all fine. Ah. Okay. Thank you.
So we're just about at five after now. Um, oh, sorry. That's okay. You want to get started, Frederick? Sure. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started then. So uh, welcome to the next Network Service Mesh meeting. Um, so uh, we have... So we have three meetings that uh, that go on. We have this one, which occurs every uh, every Tuesday, sorry, every Wednesday, excuse me, every, every Tuesday at 8 a.m. We have a documents meeting that occurs every Wednesday at 8 a.m. And we have a use case meeting that occurs every other Monday at 8 a.m. in uh, interleaved with uh, uh, the CNF testbed uh, Bridge of a Feather, which has been renamed to CNF, sorry, it's been renamed to the CNCF Telco Working Group. So that, uh, that's that been expanded a little bit now. Is it Working Group or Work Group? Or User Group? Work Group? I think it's, uh, I think it's a Work Group. Have we managed to update the calendar for that um, to reflect the, the every other week thing? Uh, Prem or Ramki, are you on? Can you answer that? Hey, uh, yeah, hey, Premier. So not it. Uh, I think I think yeah, we need to update it. Yeah. Cool, cool. yeah. If, if you could update the calendar and push something to the website. Sure. Uh, and, and I have, I'm absolutely fine with pointing to the CNF, uh, CNCF Telco working group, uh, working group off as well mm -hmm. uh, on the websites and the calendar. Does that seem reasonable to both the rest of the folks in the NSM community and also to the folks I know we have on the call from that working group. Um, yep, I would say so. Awesome. Because I, I you, know, you know, pointing more folks in their direction, I think is only goodness. Yeah, and we're, we're gonna have some collaboration with this group, so it'd be good to point out resources to them. Yep. Uh, there is also a CNF uh, networking working group as well, which is distinct from that. Uh, I have not attended one yet, um, so I'm thinking of checking it out. Uh, we have coming up, uh, starting tomorrow and the day after, is Container World, where Prem is going to give a network service mesh talk. Awesome. That will be in Santa Clara. Um, we yeah. also... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, look, I look forward for the reports back on how that goes. Like, sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, send us a video if there's one. Sure. Um, we have in uh, May 21st or 23rd, we have KubeCon EU. Um, I've also submitted something to FIDO, uh, to the FIDO mini summit attached to that. So we'll see what happens there. We have, um, it, so the call for paper is already closed. And so, so uh, we should rename the FIDO call for paper closed. Um, at KubeCon EU, we have uh, two talks. Is there one or two? We have two talks. Yeah, uh, two. That were the intro and, and deep dive. And we have KubeCon China coming up where... Uh, so, uh, uh, Frederick, uh, one thing about the KubeCon EU. Um, actually, Linux Foundation uh, has come back with uh, uh, asking to show the demo. I'm not sure whether uh, from Luminan would be uh, traveling. Um, so I was thinking probably I'll check with your Nikolai if we want to show the demo in KubeCon EU. Sure, we can do that. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So uh, you'll... Best case scenario is we get someone from, from Lumina there because you understand your side of the technology. Yeah. But if it's not, yeah. if, if it's not possible... Uh, yes, send um, introduce me to the to the person who's handling the the booth over uh, sure. for the Linux Foundation there. Yeah, uh, yeah, it would be Brandon. Yeah, I'll, I'll introduce. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so we have KubeCon China where I and Nikolai will be doing a intro talk at uh, um, at the event. Um, just as a reference, the Mobile World Congress is also in Shanghai, uh, is also on the 26th, 27th, and 28th of that. Uh, well, I don't think we're doing anything there, uh, but if you're going to Mobile World 
Congress China, then this should be easy to, to add on. I'm going to be there for on the CNF test about this, Taylor. For the uh, for Mo World Congress or for or for Qcon, I think uh, for China, Con it's like a big mix. Cool, and we have a ONS coming up in Antwerp with the Calvert Papers closing on June 16th. And that'll be held in September 23rd to 25th. And uh, finally, we have KubeCon and MEF, KubeCon uh, in San Diego, California. The call for papers open on May 6th, and we have MEF at the same time in Los Angeles. Um, I think that there's also an open source summit in Europe somewhere, maybe November. Uh, there Double. is a, I, I think the call for paper that may have already closed. Uh, we should uh, double check that. No, it's not. Is it still open? Then we, then we should, we should potentially stick down the calendar for the call for paper. Yeah. Okay. It's first of July this uh, year. The, uh, the conference or the call for paper? the call for paper de deadline cool so we'll go and add that to the calendar in a short while um and uh we finally get another announcement um uh, network service mesh is now a cncf sandbox project Yay! Yay! <laughs> <Drum roll>. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so um so yeah i get them Get the word out there. Uh, and yes, we are now on the CNCF IO website, if anyone doubts you. Um, and uh, if any, so there's a, for, for the CNCF, I'm gonna hijack this just for, for a small thing. Um, the next major goal in the CNCF milestone, besides things like get into CNF testbed or so on. But the next uh, organi organizational goal is to start working towards becoming a incubating project. And in order to become an incubating project, we have to have three, uh, we have to have three production users who are uh, independent of each other. And so, uh, so our, so we it, it, this helps gives us some some good uh, some good goals and good milestones to to work towards and there's a series of things that we'll have to do to leading up to that so you'll see some of this on on the website I believe we should be talking about it soon uh, things like FOSA license scanning and so on and of course any work to actually help uh, network service mesh become more stable will help towards that will help towards that goal. Um, we need to put together a social media community team. We have a network service mesh Twitter account uh, and service mesh Twitter account. So um, what do yeah. we want to do here? Yeah, so this, this was something where um, somebody who had retweeted the announcement that we were, um, so a good friend of mine who's very, very good at social media retweeted the announcement uh, that we were now a CNCF project and sort of uh, chastised me a little bit that, that end service mesh doesn't particularly tweet and that we should probably fix that. And so in, in typical fashion, um, the, the, the thought that occurred to me is we have this end service mesh Twitter account. And so we should put out the call to the community and see if there are folks who are good at social media stuff who would like to um, get access to that so that they can periodically tweet things related to network service mesh and keep that conversation going in social media. We're offering you to be a voice of uh, network service. Exactly. So, so is there is there is there anyone that would like to help out? Um, if you don't want to make a decision Not now. It. What? Sorry. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you for you. Be fabulous in social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even on Facebook. I'm a curmudgeon. <laughs> well, we knew that part, uh, but you were on the Twitters. 
Uh, okay, what about LinkedIn? I mean, it's a bit more professional social media, maybe uh, so slightly we, restricted, but yeah. So we actually do have a LinkedIn organization. Um, I'm not oh. sure exactly what one does with LinkedIn organizations. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> they attach themselves to it. So you can say, I work at Network Source. <laughs> right, right. I mean, part of it is like part of the reason you want to have a LinkedIn organization and is that it lets you, um, you know, let me go stick this link in the chat. Part of the reason I have a LinkedIn organization is it does let people reflect their association with the project in LinkedIn, which is super good. Um, so I stuck in the chat that LinkedIn organization. Let me stick it in the meeting minutes as well. Um, okay. One second. Oh. So, but if somebody actually knows what you do other than have people associate with it, um, with a LinkedIn organization, I'm all for that too. Yeah, I, I think we'll end up pulling a different type of person in LinkedIn. So I, I suspect that, um, that people on LinkedIn are going to be more, um, I think I don't have a good way to describe it. Uh, like I, I know there's a lot of people who are highly active on Twitter who are developers, but are not active on LinkedIn at all. And then there's a lot of people who are highly active on LinkedIn who are trying to be influencers to people who try to make decisions. And so uh, I think, a more useful way if we're going to do LinkedIn stuff would be uh, to take things like if we create a blog post or an article or something similar, uh, they do have a publishing platform mm -hmm. and that, that may actually be a useful, uh, useful medium to share things around. Well, cool. and then I think we've decided that Jeffrey's going to handle Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even looked at an Instagram post. <laughs> Here is a chance to. <laughs> Here's a chance to grow and explore. <laughs> it's all about MySpace. <laughs> indeed, indeed. We, we've got no coverage on MySpace. So if, if folks are interested in, 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 in getting involved in some of this, it's definitely something we need to start picking up. Um, but I wanted to sort of throw that out there. So we have a, uh, a set of conversations around the new logo. Can you follow the uh, the link, uh, Nikolai? Yep. yep. And we, we do have Alex on the call, so she can sort of walk us through some of this uh, real time if we would like, if we want to hand yeah. the share over to her. Sounds great. Um, I could share my screen. Does that work? Maybe? maybe yeah, or? better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Better. So that. Definitely better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I periodically try to summarize the feedback from the mailing list because um, you know, it is wonderful feedback, but if you're trying to process that email by email, it gets to be much. No, for sure. No, it was great. The, the summary was great. Um, okay, so. Yeah, Ed asked, Ed asked which one I liked, and I said, we'll take them all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nice. Um, can, you, can everyone see my screen okay? Or? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll get open. so I've done um, a second round. Uh, apologies if I missed any feedback. I tried to go through everyone's or the summary was perfect. So I went through that. Um, so I made revisions based on what all of you commented. However, I know these are still rough and obviously there still needs a lot of work. Still need a lot of work. But I tried um, some variations that were kind of um, that you all suggested, and I guess maybe we could just kind of, if anyone has any comments now, and then I could maybe revise again and send something by tonight or tomorrow, if that works. No, that, that, that sounds good. Let's just sort of walk through them okay. a little bit. I know that the, 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 the feedback we got was marvelous and varied, um, which I, I could understand makes this a bit challenging for you. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so the first one, uh, so basically I, I tried dance feedback where making all of the um, webs with seven sides as the Kubernetes logo. So I did, I changed that. Um, and then I just made some edits 
for the first one based on, I think it was Dan's feedback. Um, and then based on all of your feedback, I tried to incorporate kind of all of the suggestions I thought. However, I probably missed things. So <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> I probably did things wrong. So <laughs> um, no, you're, yeah. you're doing wonderfully. Trying to take artistic feedback from engineers is a challenging proposition. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. Um, and uh, so basically these are just kind of um, stacked icon and uh, uh, that will be easy though once once we figure out a design doing the stacked icon and horizontal but this is just kind of to show you what it could look like I guess. Yeah. Do, do folks have thoughts or, or feedback? Don't all speak at once. <laughs> I will say that like row two those look like crickets. Crickets? <laughs> Without <laughs> Violin legs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> yep. Cool. Um, so the one thing that interesting that, that struck me was um, if we if we sort of go down a little bit to a um, little further down, a little further down. So this 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 row here that's got the very looks very much like the Kubernetes network with Kubernetes logo. You know, it's a heptagon, but with all the cross connects between the vertices. Um, I, I think. Possibly, um, with the sort of central white cutout taken out, that might be super cool because it sort of it produces a callback um, in the direction of Kubernetes, but it's showing all the cross connect. What are other people's thoughts? Yeah, when I asked about a matrix over a web, because it was pointed out that it look a lot like the Neutron logo, right? A spider in a web. So I was trying to think of maybe other things that are like connectionish. And um, I think like something like what you were just describing that if we get rid of the, the white cutout, it also fits with like our whole release schedule with us going with like constellations and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, one of the, th two, the other two things that struck me were if we made the vertices, the little circle vertices, a little more star-like. Um, and then the other thought was for the interconnects, possibly a bit broader and more white space um, so that the, the negative space jumps out at you a little bit more. Um, that was just sort of like a, a random set of thoughts, because you're right, it does get a little bit with the constellation themes, it shows the interconnects. Um, and then you could put network service mesh, you know, either stacked or horizontal as words with it appro as appropriate. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely. But, so uh, for those, we would we probably the spider? remove mm -hmm. the spider, probably, right? Just focus on the... I, I, I think, and folks can correct me, that, that my takeaway, at least from the feedback, was that, that opinions on spiders vary wildly. Um, and so maybe consigning the spider to mascotness instead of logoness might be helpful. What do yeah. folks think? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep, agree. Cool. And then I, 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 I know these are all rough cuts, so I presume all the color stuff was just, you know, obviously you, you work out the shapes first and then you work out the colors. I, <laughs> I'd suggest if we uh, use spider not in the logo, but in the story lines to be the first one, which looks uh, just, nicely compared to the other. Not the first, but the second. <laughs> you mean the, 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 the one in the in with the big eyes, yeah. With the big eyes, yeah. <laughs> Can we like geek out super hard and call her an astral spider and say that she weaves constellations? <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very sci-fi, Jeffrey. Um, you can handle the Instagram posts. <laughs> uh, uh, Ed, uh, actually, if you recollect, uh, there was a bit of uh, opinion about the NSM as a word. Are we okay? Yeah, I, 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 I think th there was a comedy in made. I think we do when we do the words, we want to use network service mesh all okay. spelled out. Right. Um, yeah, I do, I do think that's probably true. Um, I think so, guys, I think. Um, there's one thing first we can uh, figure it out is that basically I can notice that there are two types. Uh, one is will be more professional and formal uh, with only the words and uh, some certain graphs. Another one is a little bit cute and funny with a little spider on it. So I think first we can figure out which kind of style we really want so that we can cut our choices in a half and uh, we can narrow that a little bit. Yep, yep. So, so how, how do how do folks sort of feel about that professional versus cutesy? Uh, well, we should do a Google poll, I guess. <laughs> uh, I mean, how are we? 
counting it like this. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think there was a lot of sentiment expressed on the, on the, the mailing about wanting to be more professional on the, the email list. Um, and I, that seemed to be sort of the consensus was that we were looking for something a little more abstract and a little more um, professional. Well, I would say al aligned with the other logos that we are aligning in the, you know, in the CNCF. I mean, when you put us with the others, we, I mean, we should yeah, yeah. be weird. I, yeah, I, I tend to agree um, that that would be more in line. I think you observed that, that it was only open tracing that had one that was cutesy. And, and like, you just can't argue with the gopher, right? It, it doesn't matter that it's QC. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we need a, we need a spider writing a gopher then. Uh, yeah. So, so um, remove the spider. So focus on the. The abstract. Yeah. yeah I think the, so. Yeah. The, okay. That sounds great. Um, okay. So that will be easier because I, that will. Um... The spider looked hard. You, yeah, the spider was hard, yeah, definitely. Particularly the one with the, the, the big eyes, um, like I was super <laughs> impressed with. And, 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 and taking Ivana's comment, maybe we will recycle that as a replacement mascot, because um, it's super well done. So um, yeah, so that's great. So I will focus on the more simple abstract ones in the middle. Um, and then I uh, guess maybe we, I could, receive the feedback the same way or um i mean or just revise based on what we've talked about now and send in the next day or so is that that good? sounds absolutely perfect does that sound good to other folks yeah can i uh, uh can you please just scroll up uh, I, I have only one comment for the uh simplified images uh, uh do you see the second row i can see uh the image behind the spider and the other uh is, uh, can you, oh, when, when you share uh, the, uh, the simplified uh, logos, can you please share one with the same size and colors because it's a bit different. The one, the second column, it uh, yeah. differs uh, from the first one in size and colors and maybe we, in order to have a choice between both. The um, color in the background of the second row. Yeah. Oh, it's because it's lighter on the the behind the spider. And yeah, and they it's uh it's also smaller. The boxes are smaller in the second okay. one. J just as an option because we might like this as well and Definitely, just yeah. have it in as an option. Definitely. Um, sounds great. Awesome. Uh, so I I will focus on this and I'll try to get away from the spider web and explore some of these options more. Uh -huh. Um. And yeah, okay. So this will be, next round will be easier for sure. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Alex. You've been super speedy on this and super good with all the feedback. It's, I know it's challenging when you, when you have so many different voices of feedback and I think you've done an excellent job of incorporating those into sort of these suggestions. So thank you oh, so much. Thank you. No, it's been, you guys have been great. So thanks so yeah, much. Great work. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Great. Uh, do you want to start sharing again, uh, Nikolai? All right, so the next topic, IRC versus Slack. <laughs> So uh, we now have a uh, we have the option of using Slack on the CNCF uh, uh, Slack space. Yeah. Um, so so I, I have one very strong set of opinions on this, which is if we are going to congregate around a an, an, uh, an asynchronous communication platform, it needs to be super clear to people how to find it. And as a corollary of this, it is probably the case that we want to, co to congregate around one as opposed to two. The, the whole point is making community conversation easier. But other than that, I'm actually completely agnostic about IRC versus Slack, although it does appear that there's a lot of Slack proponents on the line. <laughs> yeah, my, my primary the only reason I can think of in terms of supporting Slack versus IRC, because I actually, 
Uh, I, I really like RC as a platform, but there, in in the past, uh, there have been problems that people have had on like all all of Kubernetes and so on used to be on on IRC and specifically on Freenode. And there was a problem that occurred where several members of the community of the community were harassed by anonymous people and moving over to Slack allowed them to break that anonymity issue and uh, allowed them to also keep a record of what type of things were were being said to people. So so there, there is a there is a benefit from the community side uh, in order to mitigate future harassment that uh, living on the CNC of Slack may may help us with. Cool. So judging by the comments in the chat and folks feel free to speak up on the call as well. Um, it does look like we're veering there, I see lots of Slack proponents. I do not see any IRC proponents so far. So if you're an IRC proponent, please do speak up because we want to make sure that we hear all the voices on this. Okay, it, it sounds like we should start moving towards Slack then. Let, let's go ahead and get the websites updated and probably want to set the topic on the IRC channel to direct people that way and how to get invites and that kind of stuff. Sound good? Yeah, so one tricky tricky part about the Slack is that you have to find the right place to ask for being for for getting an invitation for cloud native slack.com. I mean, and it's not on cloud native.com. Yeah. We definitely want to make sure we get that link and make it super clear. Um, uh, <clears throat> when do we have a separate network service mesh Slack workspace or we are always going to use the cloud native one? So I think that's actually an interesting question. I don't know if the cloud native people would provide us with our own separate uh, network service mesh Slack. I could inquire. Um, and see if that's a possibility if folks are interested. Maybe it's too early, but for the future, uh, when the project expands, maybe um, it would be nice to have separate workspace, but we are small for now, so. Yeah, I mean, I can, it, it's, it's, so the, the lovely thing is that the CNCF staff are amazingly wonderful when you ask them things. That doesn't mean you can always get everything you ask for. Um, but they're always super kind in their responses. And so asking is a very doable thing. So uh, I, I'll go ahead and ask if folks are, would like. Um, Sorry, Ed, I beat you to that uh, first. Uh... No, no, it's all good. This is the, <laughs> this is the wonderful thing about um, about collaborative meeting note taking is that, that you know, sometimes you wind up with two notes at the same event. Cool. All cool. right. All right. I've also posted the link to to join, and the uh, the channel is NSM. So we'll add that to. <laughs> that worked perfectly. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that that's actually getting a little bit creepy. Um. <laughs> so we have uh, okay. So NSM channel, join it, um, and uh, if you're comfortable with it, you can add it to your phone, and uh, yeah. So we also have NSM in multiple Kubernetes environments now. So we now have GKE. Uh, we, yep. we now have it working on GKE. And you yeah. said specifically the CI is working on GKE, which is fantastic. Yeah, many, many thanks to Andre for that. That's been a, a long slog of you know, chasing down issues. And I, I think we still have a few he's still chasing down to get some tests re-enabled. But we are now operating. <laughs> in, um, and let me actually find a link I can stick in the chat because this is super, super cool to look at. Um, we are now operating on, on EK as well as on the packet. And I think that we have patches in review for getting us enabled on AKS as well. Is that correct? 
I think that's uh, correct. Is there, I mean, do, do you mean AWS? I mean, the um, Amazon? No, I mean, I mean Azure, Azure. Yeah, Azure, yes. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's in the review, should be more or less there. Yeah, I I'll plan, I plan to write a book for NSM for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I work here internally at VMware to get this uh, on PKS. So I'm working. Uh, oh, that would be fabulous. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the, the more the better. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a CI running there, but at least uh, basic instructions on how to get it running should be able to. <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 you know, every, every, everything helps. Um, you know, but it would be good to get CI there because I, I as a fundamental tenet of faith, I don't believe that things that are not in CI work. Um, <laughs> yes. Not, not the day I, I actually want to make sure all of our demos run in CI as well. So, you know, we, we've had a couple occasions where we have had to fix things last minute because something, something was broken in them. And, uh, and Ed, I just would like to let you know I'm working on it. Trying to put NSM running on Huawei public, uh, Huawei public cloud, and uh, hopefully there is any uh, there is if there is any progress, I will let you guys know. Thank you. Many thanks. That's awesome. My pleasure. Oh. Cool. So um, I think next up, Nikolai, we've got release and stuff. Um, yeah, and uh, we have a huge and interesting backlog here, but uh, <laughs> first, yeah, uh, thanks, thank you, Ed, for pinning and marking uh, all the interesting tickets last week. Uh, that was uh, supposed to be my job, but yeah, <laughs> thank you for taking this over. <laughs> We all get by with a little help from our friends. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so uh, first, uh, last week on Friday, apparently there was some problems with Google Cloud's infrastructure, uh, which was uh, related to pulling down modules, which essentially broke our CI for about three, three full days. So late Friday, um, that would be actually early Monday uh, on West Coast uh, till yeah till sometime Monday. Uh, but apparently that's uh, that's over now, and uh, we are back to full speed. So uh, <clears throat> we have a couple of issues uh, in progress. Uh, the Azure that we just mentioned, um, so it's uh, it's been in the works. Um, yeah, NSMCI and Google, that, that should be in already. Do we need to review that? Um, yeah, I, 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 think, I think Andre had a couple of wanting to check there first. Before yeah, 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 of course. I mean, um, we had to d d disable a couple of tests for GKE to be able to run. And actually, the nice thing about uh, adding GKE in the mix is that we have found a number of issues with. Uh, that, that were not uh, disclosed before because we were running in our comfortable self-made environment. <laughs> and when you get public, yeah. We, uh, we, had, we had a perfect match between our testing environment and our, <laughs> and our blind spots for our tests, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now, yeah. Uh, so I think, I think more of this is definitely the, the way to, to, to go. So I think that we need to have the conversation about um, what are our, our possibilities here. So, uh, for example, today we have hit uh, some limitations with our accounts on GKE, which which Andre managed to cleverly uh, circumvert with uh, a nice patch. I'm I'm trying to get those fixed. It, it appears that the out of the box there's an out of the box quota on the number of, of virtual yeah. used with Google. And apparently, if you just ask them nicely, they're delighted to increase it. Yeah. I just need to know how to ask. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but the question is a little bit more generic, like what are the limits that we get there? I mean, uh, are we already moving to uh, CNCF uh, 
providing us these accounts what what is the status of this so i don't know if this is something that we should discuss now but yeah we should try to figure it out i mean if we want to add more of these types of accounts in our ci pipeline and uh, from the looks of it we today like very heavily load this <clears throat> like our um, current build is 35 minutes uh, and uh, the plans that are, that we have are <laughs> going to just increase that. <laughs> uh, I think you're right, because I think that, that that's getting to be super long, and the way you bring that down is parallelism, and parallelism means standing up more environments. So, yeah, we're definitely going to need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I think that, that it's worth mentioning that we have a number of... Uh, VPP, let's say, related uh, things that uh, I know that the, the nice guys from the VPP team are, um, I mean, they are aware of this and they're working. So today, uh, the use case with VPN, actually the part about the ACL firewall is essentially disabled in the CI and it's not working if you try to deploy it. Um, on, on your own. Um, so add whatever you proposed with heap size as, uh, as noted in the issue. Uh, changes something, but apparently in a strange way. So I'm not sure what's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, we're, we've got two sets of things. One is that we've got a bunch of problems that look like they're going to be cleared up by moving to VVP two zero dot, the VV agent 2.0.1. Mm -hmm. And we've got some things that we're just sort of scratching our heads around. Um, and I'll go be reaching out to some of the VPP guys because um, it's, it's, they're, they're weird looking things in part because they're the kinds of things where clearly we've stumbled into a very odd corner mm -hmm. because it's like not the, you know, we, we know there's a lot of EPP running in production in a lot of places. And this is, these, these are fundamental enough bugs that clearly that would not work. Um, if we, if these were happening in anything but corner cases. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll definitely get that figured out. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, so uh, we also have a couple of things which are in the works around IPv6, um, which are mostly on my and uh, the people that I work with site. So I know that Radoslav, I think that he's not on the call today, but um, he started already uh, pushing pushing this. Awesome. Uh, and for IPv6 payloads, uh, I have some ideas what I want to do here. Um, although, Ed, uh, if you if you're able to answer the question that I actually put here in the <coughs> in this issue, yeah, you, maybe yeah, maybe we need some clear clearance there. And essentially, the planning was, and actually, I had a PR push against the site, uh, set setting up a table uh, with the dates. So next week we were supposed to. And we will probably do that in any case. Like um, have um, um, have the, the the release in, in a branch. So at least have the, the branch and start picking uh, cherry picking uh, patches there, not just merging, uh, so that people can continue de developing whatever they want uh, against the master. But then uh, uh, we will probably um, uh, you know, filter whatever gets into the the branch, into the release branch. So, and that's going to happen next week, probably Tuesday, I guess. Uh, that's that's in the plan. I think that we are. Yeah, I mean, at at least we have outlined whatever we want to have. Maybe we will have to settle with some compromises for the release, but that's uh, yeah. That's something that we need to 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 to, to yeah. talk maybe maybe beginning of May. Now uh, there, there there is uh, I mean uh, today we have a lot of very fast paced development, so a lot of the issues like for example these uh, things that Matt was so kind to report to us. I guess that maybe some of these are already uh, resolved, and uh, as you mentioned that some of the uh, VPP goodies that are in the latest release probably also solve the other half, <laughs> I hope. Uh, but yeah, um, so I believe that, that with a little bit of uh, verification, we'll probably strip this list uh, a lot down to yeah. 
uh, I, I think quite a lot of things are expected to be resolved with the VPP 2.01 mm -hmm. uh, because we, we went to the VPP agent community and said, hey, we're seeing all these things and their response was, what version are you running? And then a yeah. and then a release notes indicating that they thought they had fixed a lot of things that looked a lot like we, what we have mm -hmm. here. So. Mm -hmm. so you know what, I will probably, because I have this, uh, this uh, PR sitting for a while, uh, where I was trying to enable 2.01, uh, but also enable the VPN tests, which obviously were not addressed there. So probably we will just try to merge uh, to 2.01 to, to without being, without VPN, VPN tests being enabled and uh, see see how this goes. <clears throat> yeah. Probably that, uh, I mean, no point in insisting in this. I think it was for the last, more than a week and yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't re resolve by itself. So uh, let's try to, to approach it <laughs> in so some other way. We're actually in a super good place here because we're, we're, we're at exactly sort of the, the, the point in the release cycle where you, you start getting an explosion of bugs because your testing is coming up and going mm -hmm. well. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually super pleased with the number of bugs that we're shaking out of the system and about the rapidly expanding testing. Um, so this is, this is feeling good. So did this guy here essentially yeah uh, I know that that the this uh, this uh, bigger topic about the prefixes took a while but I believe that we already have I think everything maybe some minor bugs there, there's, to there's be one fixed. minor set of things that we still need to figure out there which mm -hmm. is how to extract information about the service kitters um, so we're, we're still trying to figure that out it's not nearly as obvious as the pod kitters Mm -hmm. uh, but the good news is we actually, we know, we know exactly the things to do mm -hmm. uh, to correctly enforce the exclude prefixes. So when we figure out how to grab the service kitters, um, then it should be relatively easy to drop that in. Um, and the trick there is I'm, I'm just spending a little bit of time wandering through the Kubernetes code to try and find the right handle to grab a hold of those. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's basically where we're at. Are you saying that, that these are going to be handled in uh, NSMDP? I don't know if they're handled in NSMDP, although that may be where they're, they're handled. Um, but they, effectively, I think we're extracting the pod kitters from the nodes right now, and we just need to figure out the right way. You know, well, or sometimes we are extracting the pod kitters and the service kitters from the uh, cube config config map, but that's only sometimes present. Um, mm -hmm. So. You know, it's one of those things. You've got to chase down data. You know exactly Actually, what. now it's ready for request, uh, which collects from services also, and it works pretty fine, I think. So. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you. You could review it. Oh, excellent! That's that's a super good thing. <clears throat> uh, okay, I think that we. I don't know. Are there any? questions regarding this. I mean, I know that it's a bit, uh, I mean, if someone has any specific questions, you might just jump in in the issue and ask specifically or say that this is top priority for me. I would prefer if this gets in the release on any price. So, yeah, I mean. Yep. Yeah, one quick question from me, uh, funny yep. here. Um, so Nikolai and uh, Ed, uh, uh, when we express some of these aspects like exclude prefixes or, or the whitelist prefixes or, or even the cider pools and all that. Uh, are we using the standard Kubernetes network policy to uh, express and convey these or are, uh, are, are is NSM defining a new model where? Oh, no, so, so please note that this has nothing to do with Kubernetes network policy at all because that Kubernetes network policy applies to the Kubernetes networking you get from CNI, right? Right. Um, what, these, what this is is, Basically, Kubernetes has a set of kidders that it's using. Yeah. We shouldn't be using anything out of those kidders because then you start screwing up Kubernetes networking. Got you. This is more of a sidecar, so it better be on a different plane. Yeah, exactly. So basically, what we're, what we're doing here is that there's a mechanism in network service mesh where when a client is requesting something of a network service endpoint, it can indicate that there's a set of excluded prefixes that should never actually um, be assigned to this connection as part of IPAM or routes or any of that stuff, right? And all this is doing is making sure that NS the network service manager 
adds to that list of excluded prefixes all the Kubernetes cluster prefixes um, so that we don't stomp those by mistake. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. If someone were to send back a route that routes traffic to a particular network service endpoint um, that is supposed to be handled by the Kubernetes networking, that would be bad. And so this is avoiding that. Gotcha. Yep, yep. No, it's a very good question. Yeah. Um, no, but in terms of the syntax, Ed, um, is it a fair point? Can we use the network policy uh, um, syntax that people are already defining? Uh, so th this is actually not something that's showing up in a Kubernetes resource. Um, so it, it would be a fair point if it were going into a Kubernetes resource. But what's uh, happening, this goes into the gRPC calls. Um, I they, see. Yeah, so yeah. This, this won't be a CRD, I, I guess. No. No, no. Th gotcha. this, <clears throat> but that would, if it were a CRD, that's a super good suggestion. Yeah. Um, okay. So next week we do the branch. Then yep. we probably do the first stack, I hope. Yep. yep. And then we have the so called stable. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Stable alpha. <laughs> uh, stable offer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it's super exciting that we're closing in on our on our first release. Um, like mm -hmm. like all first releases, there's a whole list of things I feature wise I would have loved to have gotten in, but we all know how that goes. Yeah, and yeah. let's hope that we have the logo by that time, <clears throat> so we can release with the logo. <clears throat> yeah. uh, okay. Oh, so. Jeffrey, let me do a real quick announcement before we move on to this. Uh, so the CNF testbed is putting together an integration with network service mesh and uh, and other things like OpenStack and so on. So any help that we can, if anyone wants to help with that effort, uh, start join the Monday uh, working CNF uh, telco working group, CNCF telco working group. And get a hold of me, and I will uh, get you into plugged into that uh, community, or get a hold of Taylor, and we'll. Mm -hmm. We just basically need people to, to uh, fill out what uh, what that thing looks like, and to start implementing the uh, the test bed uh, portions. And they already have a lot of amazing stuff there already. So, uh, so yeah, get a hold of me after the meeting, and I will get you hooked up. And with that. Uh, Jeffrey, oh, wait, you have something you want to say? Yeah, so a couple things. Um, Nikolai, if you could click on the first link there. The first draft of the glossary is done, and Nikolai has put it into Git. So from now on, any um, definition changes um, to like what we're going to have as far as the core components and stuff, um, we're going to do through get here so that we have version control um the google doc is kind of the wild wild west so if there's something that you see that's wrong or if a definition changes over time um make a pull request against this to go ahead and um you know have anything added if there's definitions that you feel are missing um or anything like that then once again you know you can work that through get via issues things like that um so on the side though, if we go back to the meeting notes, um, Nikolai, if you could hit the next link. This is gonna be um, one of the next big things that we're working on is um, the definitions in Git are fine, but like it doesn't really give you a ton of like context. Um, so we're working on something that you should be able to share with people who you know are not NSM savvy. Um, it's going to have pictures, diagrams, et cetera, um, sometimes more robust definitions, a little bit more wordy. So this is going to kind of be like the, um, when someone says, what is an SM, you know, beyond just like that one page that we're rewriting on the website, you can send this to them and it'll have, you know, an explanation of what all the parts are and then diagrams of, you know, so it's like click on number seven um, for me, mm -hmm. Nikolai. So here's an example, right? Like the external network service manager. This is one that like a lot of people have had a lot of confusion around. Um, please don't judge me on these very rough diagrams that I'm putting together, but it's way easier to visualize what an external network service manager is versus me just writing that big block of text on the side. Um, so 
those of you who do attend the documentation stuff, I would really appreciate your help helping me make this look nicer, um, help me add content in. And then finally, um, with the release of Andromeda, um, the, um, I didn't put any notes on the meeting for this, and I'll add one after this, but um, we need to put some guides together. Um, we were talking about this last week in the documentation call. So once you know this you know, first release is dropped, we need something more than just a simple run this make command, right? Um, so we'll be looking for people, especially those who um, have been doing a lot of testbed. If you've got like lessons learned, you don't necessarily have to um, attend the calls and stuff, but when we send out uh, you know, drafts, PDFs, et cetera, if you've got like some little nuggets that you've got you know, through your testing or installations and stuff that you wanna add, we'd really appreciate that because the easier we make this for the community once we drop Andromeda, the better and the more uptake I think we'll have. And so, um, always just looking for additional support on the documentation front. Are we going to run to the official fly. glossary during the uh, meeting tomorrow? I, I had a couple comments on the ENSM, or we can meet afterwards and I can tell you what my comments are. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll kind of discuss some, I, I think tomorrow, so for those that attend, um, what we want to do is kind of maybe put some names to tasks on some of the specific guides. Um, I want the visual glossary done pretty soon. That way um, it's also ready with Andromeda. I, so I've pointed a lot of people internally at my company to NSM and it usually by sending them to our website creates more questions than um, you know answers. And I end up having to do like little mini um, whiteboard sessions and stuff. So um, that's another thing. Actually, I'll add this too. Um, I've opened up an issue in network service mesh slash site. Um, for those of you who are more artistic than myself, we could use some help um, facelifting network uh, service mesh.io. I .io. Um, think that CNCF are providing this as a service to, the, to us as a sandbox project, like they can help us with that? That's yeah, there's, perfect. Um, there's, there's two things so, though. Uh, yeah, right? So we, should, we, we have the design of it and I think we should yeah. ask them to have resources to help. I think what Jeffrey is discussing is the content uh, is confusing and we need to make sure that the content it makes it very clear from the very beginning, what is network service mesh? And we make that as easy as possible to, to digest. So. Yeah, can you go to the Git real quick, um, Nikolai? Um, like, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Just the sorry. network service mesh um, yeah. slash site. Yeah. So go up one and then yeah. drop down into site. Click one to the left. Uh, I'm sorry, what, ah, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 and, and then site right there. So I've opened up an issue. If we could get some more people to take a look, um, I'm talking about like the actual, the code repo for the site, Nikolai. Anyways, look at this as well, kind of help us, like one of the big things I was told is like the what is an SM, A, it was um, like a very, very early rendition and a lot's changed, so that's not current anymore, but, um. If you could help us like go through the site, open up some issues, the RC stuff, let's definitely leverage the um, help that we're gonna get from the CNCF. Um, I'm gonna try to start working with um, Frederick and Nikolai on rewriting the what is network service mesh. But um, the documentation page, um, A, doesn't link to a lot of our documentation and two is just kind of awkward, right? So like if you scroll down, um, this what is an SM, um, by the way, there is a PR to change this to a draft so we can hide this, but this basically needs to be completely reworked. We could use some help on that. And then um, we need to make it so that it's like front and center on the main page. So this, as soon as someone goes to our site, they click on this and they can quickly read and see, okay, this is what NSM is and this is why I might want to use it. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, and so yeah, that's all I have. Um, like I said, the glossary is there. If people need changes to core definitions, please use the mechanisms in Git, and then um, we'll start looking at putting some guides together to release with Andromeda, and then working on the visual glossary. Awesome. Okay. It's, uh... I think that we have something new here. Uh, it is in community. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Good. Um, 
Okay, I guess that's it. We uh, can wrap up. Oh, no. Just, just one. Uh, yeah, guys. Ramki, yeah. Uh, so, uh, thanks. So, uh, what I wanted to discuss was, I think we're really running, running out of time. We can deep dive next week. But uh, how we want to align uh, NSM at Istio service mesh, especially from a service description perspective, right? Uh, you know, uh, just wanted to discuss with the team. I know, uh, Fred, you had done some very good work on sort of the Envoy integration also, but sort of how these are all coming together and um, um, how we can better align these two initiatives. That is the top. Uh, yeah, we, we, we discuss. So we, we can discuss that uh, at, at a later time. Um, there are some areas that make sense for alignment and others that don't. Uh, and so we, we can we can talk from our side as to what what we think that that should uh, like where where do we think we can help Istio? And a lot of these questions actually come down to how how can we help Envoy? Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Envoy. Yeah, and also maybe uh, on the service description itself, how we can sort of align together. That could be an interesting topic because basically, oh, absolutely. that's doing L7 is doing L3, but it's pretty much the same graph, right? We're just talking about a, both of them are talking about a directed acyclic graph after all, right? At the end of it. Yeah, there, there might describe. be a way to there. There might be a way to to automate some of the some of that together but yeah we'll, we'll talk we'll add it to the schedule next week and we can discuss it more in detail or, uh, or, we, can, or we can drive this to the use case they might be better to the use case group yeah yeah we can yeah yeah we can we have the call next week yeah sure yeah why not and guys just just one quick thing so uh, about the event china so uh i'm planning to attend the as well. So, uh, Fred and Nikolai, if you guys are uh, attending to that event, just in case you need any help, you need any information, so you have my email, just let me know and to see if I can help so I to live and work in the city. So, uh, I know that area. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Well, we'll take you up on that. I've never, I've never been to Shanghai, and I don't think Nikolai has either. So, oh, I've been. And, uh, <laughs> and then, been. um, Okay. And, I'm really, and I'm really looking forward if it is possible that we can like set up a time and uh, have a little chat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wish I had time. So anyways, cool. I need to wrap up the, the yep. meeting at the moment. Um, okay. Continue discussions on NSM on Slack. Uh, the joins <laughs> are automated. You know, you know where the link's at on the meeting minutes. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again at the same time next week. Uh, Thank, you, Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.